In this particular video session, what we're going to do is examine the ordinal utility theory and the process by which this theory states that a consumer achieves equilibrium, that is, they maximize their total utility. Now, the main difference between the cardinal utility theory and the ordinal utility theory is that the cardinal utility theory states that utility can be calculated. All right, it is, it is possible to calculate a value for utility for every unit consumed, and therefore you'll be able to calculate your total utility. The ordinary utility theory simply says the opposite, that we cannot actually calculate utility in the real world. How can you assign a numerical value for a unit consumed or for a service consumed? So what the ordinary utility theory posits is that while we may not be able to calculate utility, we can represent different levels of satisfaction via diagrams. And this is where we bring the indifference curve analysis to the forefront. Now, what is an indifference curve? As a consumer, you have choices. In this case here, we are simply going to compare the choices between two goods. In this case, good Y and good X. And what we're simply saying is that as an individual, you would have multiple options, multiple combination choices between good Y and good X in terms of how much of good Y you would desire and how much of good X you would desire. So in the indifference curve analysis, the y-axis here represents the quantity of units of good y that can be chosen by the consumer. And on the x-axis, we have good x, the quantity of units of good x that could be chosen by the consumer. And what we see here is that you have different combination choices represented by A, B, C, and D. So we realize with combination choice A, the consumer can have this blue bracket this amount of good Y and a, therefore a smaller amount of good X or you could choose combination choice C which would give them more of X represented by this green bracket and less of Y and therefore we realize immediately as we increase the consumption of good X moving from the smaller blue bracket to the larger green bracket it resulted in a reduction in the, in the consumption of good Y from the large blue bracket to the smaller green bracket. Again, this depicts scarcity. Now, while we are seeing A, B, C, and D, four possible combination choices, every point along this curve represents different combination choices for the consumer. But it is important to note that regardless of which combination choice is chosen along this curve, every combination choice on the same indifference curve will yield the same level of utility. I say again, every combination choice, whether you take this amount of good Y, or this amount of good X, or maybe smaller amount of good Y and a larger amount of good X, both combination choices actually yield the same level of utility. In this particular case, this indifference curve yields a value or a satisfaction of 20. So every combination choice along the same indifference curve will yield to the consumer a value of 20. So therefore, how can a consumer under this analysis, the ordinary utility theory, be able to experience higher degrees of utility? We could simply rationalize that if an indifference curve yields only one specific measure of utility, it means that the consumer may have to jump to or be upon a new indifference curve with a higher value. This brings us, therefore, to the concept of the indifference map. Every consumer has an indifference map, and an indifference map shows different number of indifference curves or it simply represents or illustrates several indifference curves. What it means therefore is that a consumer would desire to be on the highest possible indifference curve that they can attain. Now in this indifference map we have three possible indifference curves for this particular consumer. I1, I2, and I3. 
I1 yields a value of utility of 20, I2 yields utility of 30, and I3 yields a utility of 50. So regardless of where the consumer chooses to consume an I1, every combination choice yields a value of 20. Regardless of where the consumer chooses to consume on I2, the, the, the utility derived on, on either combination choice will yield 30. And on I3, regardless of where the consumer chooses to consume of good Y and good X, every combination choice yields a value of 50. So if the consumer wants to get maximum satisfaction, maximum utility, they will prefer to be on I3 as opposed to I2 and I1, simply because I3 has the highest degree of utility, which is a value of 50. Now, while we know what the consumer would want, we now need to determine what the consumer can actually get. And we know at the end of the day, what limits the choices of consumers in most cases is the resource level of the consumer. A consumer can only go as far as their resources will allow them. And that will bring us to the introduction of what we know as the budget line. And we're going to introduce that in a next video. So stay tuned as we go on to discuss the budget line. Thank you.